Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming today. You are the studio audience for a video that we're recording. So just to know that we partway through, we'll turn it around and you'll be on camera. So let us know if there's any issue. Um, this is a, a part of a speaker series for um, Chiba Institute of Technology, Chiba Kogyo Daigaku uh, Center for Radical Transformation, which in Japanese is the Henkaku Center. Um, we have several guests. Uh, Father Eric Solibir, who is from the Order of Priests of the Dominican Order, and also the consultor, or is like an advisor uh, mm -hmm. for digital for the Vatican Holy See. And uh, he's a researcher, a visiting researcher at uh, Chiba Kogyo Daigaku, and Tenzin Priyadarshi, who's the director of the Dalai Lama Center. And what's, how do you describe your order? <laughs> Just the Buddhist order. Buddhist, the Buddhist, <laughs> Buddhist order. <laughs> And then Marisan, who is an um, a NFT artist and has been working with uh, temples on doing NFTs. And today's topic is uh, NFT and art. And we're also here at Myoshinji um, and Taizo Ying uh, as a guest of um, Daiko san. And we'll, he'll be on camera later. So thank you. And I'll hand it over to Tenzin to kick us off. Oh, thank you. It's, a, it's both a delight and a privilege to uh, kick off this conversation on NFT, religion, art, etc. Uh, it's first in our sort of exploration, and, uh, and we are we couldn't be more delighted to begin this conversation in Kyoto, uh, in Myoshinji. And thank you, Daiko-san, for your kind hospitality. And we have a wonderful group of people here uh, in the studio audience who we are hoping will uh, be part of the conversation uh, as we switch things around uh, in a few. Um, one of the things that has been happening with the advent of technology and religion is that early on, uh, most religious orders were uh, not in favor of technology. They were kind of anti even. And then later on, they started to adopt technology and they realized it could actually help their mission, their uh, work and so on. Uh, but then there are certain forms of technology that we are still sort of grappling with in terms of, uh, you know, what the belief system is, what the uh, you know, for lack of a better term, the religious code can allow for. And so part of this conversation is to see, uh, you know, how religious enterprises are going to make sense of NFT and how we are going to sort of do something with it, either in, in, in form of collaboration or making a statement or, or perhaps doing even some kind of collaborative projects uh, going forward. Because one thing that we have realized um, in the long haul is that uh, technology is here to stay. Uh, just like religion, and it's going to morph uh, into different shapes, and we have to figure out a way to coexist and hopefully flourish together. So, first question that, that I wanted to pose. Yeah, that, so self intros. Oh, self intros. Yeah, let's start with one minute uh, self intro. Maybe Marisan, you want to begin? Yeah, why not? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, my name is Mari, uh, Mari Asada. I'm a digital artist and visual artist. And uh, I actually, my kindergarten was Buddhist temple. And I graduated, uh, my um, senior and high school is a uh, um, uh, uh, um, Christian, yeah. And uh, yes, uh, and I've been uh, working as an artist. And also these days I am active on the crypto NFT uh, projects. And I'm really happy to be here. Thank you very much. Great, great. Father Eric. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for uh, having me here. Uh, so uh, I'm Eric Salubir, uh, so I'm French. Uh, and uh, actually, I was trained uh, in a business school and I used to be a banker. So like something very different. And at some we, point we, in my we, life, we, we won't hold it against you. It's OK. <laughs> and then I flipped completely. I mean, in the scripture, in, in the Bible, it's written, you cannot serve two masters, God or uh, uh, money. And so I ser served God, uh, money and then I tried to flip and, and the second master is the best. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> so now I serve God. Uh, but actually I use a lot what I, I learned, uh, like uh, working in uh, merchant acquisitions and in, in a bank more generally speaking, because I run a foundation called Human Technology Foundation. I, I enjoy it a lot to establish it in the beginning uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, just to put the, the human being at the center of the development of technology and I'm also so an advisor for the Holy See on, on those topics. And as it's obvious, I'm a, a Dominican, so wearing the, the, the robe, the white robe of uh, the Dominican order. And so, so happy to be here. 
Thank you, Joey. Yeah, so I'm Joey Ito. I'm the director of the Center for Radical Transformation. I forgot to mention, um, uh, Tenzin's also uh, uh, a researcher, and we teach a class together there on awareness, and um, also the digital architect for Digital Garage, which is a company. Great, and I'm Tenzin Priyadarshi. I'm a Buddhist monk. Uh, I run the Dalai Lama Center for Ethics and Transformative Values at MIT, and uh, which uh, sort of explores, you know, questions on uh, humane dimensions and ethical dimensions of life and how it evolves. Uh, and it's a joy to, to be here. So I, I guess the first question perhaps uh, 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 for you all will be around the idea of what do you think is, um, um, is uh, even the benefit of such a venture? Meaning why should religious orders or religious enterprises mm -hmm. cross paths with NFT. Mm -hmm. should, I, should I start? Yeah. So, so you know, I, th I think that we were talking about money being kind of a god. I think money, cash, has been a way to um, scalably transfer v value. Um, and it's a very specific, very concrete value that's come out of sort of the accounting of physical things. And money is a very efficient way to coordinate human behavior around um, production of things. And we have a lot of types of value that aren't linked to the ownership of things. So for example, um, degrees. So if you have a PhD, uh, you can't sell it for money and you can't buy it for money, but you need to be able to have it and you need to be able to confirm it and schools need to be able to confer it. But in order to have you know, Karthik's PhD validated, uh, you have to have uh, a school and you have to have money and you have to have this whole structure and it's very complicated. And in fact, I, th I would say that the process of conferring degrees and handling degrees is so expensive that it's, it's a very scarce and elite system. But in fact, we should be able to give credentials for all kinds of things that people do in society. But the infrastructure of universities is, is a very kind of you know, physical thing. If we could do something like that, in a much more uh, lightweight and open and decentralized way, many more people could interact in the economy of credentialing. And similarly, I think with religion, you have a lot of ways of conferring um, blessings and interactions, and you're not supposed to be able to buy uh, spiritual value, but you should be able to, as we do with amulets and blessings and alms and all kinds of things, be able to transmit it. And so sort of the question is, I mean, so we can bless people and we can bless things. And is there a way to bless an NFT that allows us to be more inclusive of things like spiritual value transmission? That's kind of my question. Okay, Father Eric, you wanna? Yeah, uh, re re really, really interesting. Actually, I would say ju just to come back to uh, your statement about uh, religion and technology or science, I would say that from the Christian perspective, it was like an old relationship, but like an old couple. So you have time of deep love and you have time of strong fights. And for example, the, 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 the terrible uh, story of Galileo Galilei was clearly a time of fight, but we had better <laughs> times thanks to God. And, and so it's like... Uh, uh, going together since a long time, but none in a peaceful way. So, yes. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and so we hope to, like, let's say, to develop and to let flourish a more peaceful time uh, in interaction. And about this specific technology, uh, as you mentioned in a previous conversation, Joe, uh, 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 um, money is also a question of trust. Mm -hmm. As, and I would say in French, uh, the, the, the way to design a banknote is money fiduciaire, and it means it comes from fides in, in Latin, which means uh, 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 faith. And, and so it means you need to trust in something. And I think that those technologies could allow us uh, also uh, to uh, provide, uh, to testify something which could be related to uh, uh, trust and which would be related to spirituality. And I would say that probably perhaps we will have uh, to talk a little bit of each of our uh, uh, traditions. And I would say that there's a kind of big change in the Christian tradition nowadays. And perhaps there's a kind of, uh, uh, th there's a will for the, the, the believers to come back to something a bit like practical, tangible, or, and Paradoxically, uh, uh, NFT could be that. So a way to grasp something in between God and you because God is just like almighty, but like a bit far. 
So that could be a nice way for people like to renew something about their spiritual life. And that's interesting to explore. So I think, you know, I'm, uh, we are touching on a few themes. One is the, the aspect of currency itself, how it evolves over a period of time. The second is the, the notion of tangible and intangible. And uh, the religious world does deal with a lot of things intangible in certain ways, not to say the civic world doesn't. Uh, the third thing is the issue of trust. Um, uh, where religious communities are still sort of major leverage and trust. You know, we could see that even recently with vaccines, mm -hmm. uh, when uh, the developers of vaccines and policymakers started calling religious enterprises and saying, can your religious leaders be the first one to take it mm -hmm. so, that, so that people can have trust in it, right? Um, but there are certain aspects of, of this thing, and, and uh, uh, we want to come to your presentation in a bit, uh, uh, but let me take the meta uh, sort of uh, uh, thing first. And, and since we have also repre other representatives, one of the thing is about the longevity of the value itself, right? So uh, a dollar is a dollar until the value crashes, um, held against gold and, and whatnot. That's how we have traditionally sort of understood currency in, in tangible forms, right? Uh, when we take blessing as a marker, as we have been talking about that, when we take religious artifacts and bless it or consecrate it, and, and there are different sort of uh, techniques around it, um, it adds life to it, meaning it adds more meaning to it and, and, and value to it, uh, at least for the believers in, in certain ways. One of the things that we were sort of talking about is the idea that can we bless NFTs or can we consecrate NFTs, uh, even, even speaking? such that it can carry the same kind of blessing, right? As if we were blessing, uh, uh, you know, an amulet uh, from a temple or, or, uh, or a mandala uh, when we are sort of blessing it. Uh, the other part of it is how long will it last? <laughs> how long will the blessing last? Because we do have a practice where people come time and time back again to the temples or to the churches to renew. Uh, uh, should it be renewed virtually or should there be another process and, and kind of thing? So any thoughts on, on what blessing an NFT or consecrating an NFT would imply in Christian tradition? I, I think, yeah, if we start from the Christian tradition, it, it's a bit like uh, the further point and, and perhaps the most difficult way to go uh, to, 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 to go to the topic because okay. there's no one Christian tradition, I would say, because we have several denominations. And yeah. for example, the Protestants, they don't worship the saints and they are like directly related to God and even the Virgin Mary, who's uh, uh, the, the, the mother of Jesus Christ, so uh, the son of God, uh, it, it is not part of the, 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 the worshiping and the liturgy. And so for them, probably, it would be more difficult to include this kind of technology but I would say from a Catholic perspective uh, we have like, let's say uh, three things first uh, we uh, uh, trust the saints and we worship the saints and, and for, for that we have what we call the relics so that can be the bones that can be all the artifacts uh, uh, which belong to the saints and everything which is related and in such a case uh, having the possibility for example to testify that something is really uh, for example, the hat of St. Peter, uh, the bone of St. Joseph, whatever, could provide something like, so it's not the NFT which would be blessed, but it could be like a, a, a way to testify about something and to put more trust. Because during the Middle Age, there was like a big, uh, uh, um, let's say, market about the relics, uh, buying and selling and so on. And at some point we have, I mean, enough wood from the Holy Cross to build all the forest. So, I mean, <laughs> which part comes really from the Holy Cross, this is not obvious. Unfortunately, we did not have NFTs at this time, so it was not possible to testify it, but that would be very helpful. So that's the first point. And also, uh, uh, we have this kind of uh, connection with objects or artifacts, but uh, I would say less than we used to have. So nowadays, I would say not the hierarchy, but the priest consider that you can be directly, it's, it's more efficient spiritually to be directly uh, connected to God. But I know that's a a lot of people also want to have tangible things just to remember and if you go to some modern churches there's nothing there's not a sculpture there's not a painting it's really like a pure 
and it's beautiful but at the same time people want to go to a, a sculpture and pray for uh, uh, ask something to uh, to to a, a saint or uh, and 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 they like to burn a candle and they like to do things i mean we're incarnated so we need to have tangible stuffs and so this uh, could be i mean for me the blessing would not be the blessing of the nft but the blessing of uh, what's behind and that can be something intangible like a, a digital work of art which has a value and it certifies the value or it can be a tangible uh, 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 artifact it can be a picture it can be a sculpture or something like water coming from uh, uh, lotus for example this sanctuary for the virgin mary in the south of france which is worldwide famous um, among uh, catholics so just just to testify that this water really comes from Lourdes. That, that could make a difference, yeah. I, I feel like NFTs are as tangible as water. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but I, and I think to your point, though, I, I think that like, the smart contracts often get upgraded and we get new blockchains. So there will always be a need to upgrade the technology because it's not as solid as rock. So I think that's the new business model for mm -hmm. temples and churches yeah. is to uh, upgrade the technology of the NFT um, so that we can continue. Uh, uh, One of the challenges, at least from what I understand, even in the, in the, uh, in the Buddhist temples in Japan, mm -hmm. over the pandemic was that people couldn't meet physically and they wanted you know, blessings and articles uh, this way. And I've seen like even the most orthodox Hindu priests mm -hmm. uh, performing rituals over cell phones mm -hmm. uh, and, and Zoom. Mm -hmm. But this is an example. Can you say a little bit about it? Yes, this is uh, Goshuin NFT. Uh, Goshuin is a red stamp. Uh, actually, uh, traditional Goshuin is like people visit temple or shrine and they kind of uh, copy the uh, sutra. Then they, they can get this from our priest. Uh, they write with a brush, um, it's a calligraphy, and stamp whether the worship uh, God or, um, or um, de de right. deity. So, <laughs> so just to give the background. Yeah. Um, yes. Copying oh. of sutras is considered a merit-making mm -hmm. practice in, in the Buddhist world, mm -hmm. uh, or also in, in many of the Asian religious traditions. And this is done. Uh, you have a, uh, I think yes. you showed an image of the copying of sutra, isn't it? Um, I think. Yes, this is next one, this next one, level. Right. This is copying sutra. But right. uh, originally I did it for our last, last our year end on the new year. I made this uh, six uh, goshuing, red right. stamp for uh, people for the blessings uh -huh. and people really loved it because in the new year people want to wish make a wish and they and they're also a blessing right. uh, i'm working with temple uh he's a uh, deputy uh priest on the temple right. uh, uh he we had long discussion what is nft and what can we do and we had a long long discussion and we uh, came came to the uh, conclusion oh yeah um, NFT is like, uh, actually the Red Stamp Goshuni is like NFT, like, because there's a proof. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, NFT is uh, all ab uh, about uh, connection and proof and uh, ownership and uh, the... So history. it's from particular temples yes, and they have their yes, seals yes, on, on, on this thing. This yeah. actually is interesting right. because in a way, it's kind of proof of work, yep. right? Yes. So you've done it and it's kind of like conferring, it's kind of a cross between a credential and a currency uh -huh, uh -huh, because you uh -huh. can't use it more than once. Right, right. right. And, and so that, that's quite interesting as right, a structure, right, right, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So we sold it, um, but uh, they sell, uh, Goshuin is really cheap at mm -hmm. their temple, so they want it really low price. Right, right, right. So right. yeah, we did it. Um, but we have been also talking about NFTs that don't have any monetary value because mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. th there are things like if we weren't to foster trust, mm -hmm. kindness, uh, a sense of empathy yep. uh, in, in society. Uh, there were models in, in early religious orders where you know mm -hmm. money did not have much value, mm -hmm. like there were other objects mm -hmm. by which you could say, give this person mm -hmm. a, a, a safe passage yep. Yep. or give this person uh, meals or, or house this person just by virtue of presenting yep. that token, which fostered a certain kind of trust uh, in thing. Mm -hmm. what, what do you guys think about well, so having something so, so in fact yeah. you know so the uh, chiba kogyo daigaku we have a we have a, a community near it called right. the henkaku community and yesterday at in the evening we were actually having a token economics discussion and we have tokens called henkaku token that the only way you earn it is by doing work for the community uh -huh. and so people are doing the work and you spend it by getting either nfts or getting to come to events like this 
and we're going to have lecture series and things, the only way you get in is to buy tickets with those tokens. Mm -hmm. And you can't buy the tokens for money and you can't sell the tokens for money, but it has a community value. And then we have many, many things we're producing. So the meeting yesterday was all about things that we're going to make offer, not for no money. You can't mm -hmm. buy it, but you can only buy it with this token. So, yeah. so you could imagine that if we had this Goshuing and you, could, you couldn't buy it with money, but you can only buy it with tokens which are representative of community work, it starts to look like a church, right? And in a church, you might actually do it. But, it, but the, and I think this is the key thing is that in a church, traditionally, you had to use money or you had to use some other way, but you couldn't easily have multiple communities that just shared work, but no money, right? But now I could say to um, Daiko-san, can we use Henkaku tokens here? to provide food or to provide shelter, and we create an alternative community. But, but the key thing for me is that if I make events that only way to get in is through Henkaku tokens, mm -hmm. they become more valuable than money, right. kind of like degrees or certain types of religious things, because I think it makes it cheap sometimes if you can buy it with money, right? right. Any thoughts? Yeah, um, I would say that uh, the interest for us in the, the, the Catholic perspective would be, for example, to testify some steps like an experience like having a pilgrimage, mm -hmm. for example, to, to uh, go to Santiago de Compostela in Spain. It's a long pilgrimage that you have to uh, do, so you walk. Mm -hmm. and, and as you say, it's only the experience that this is something you cannot buy and the transformation of your soul, the salvation comes from, we, we say it comes from the feet because you just walk and walk and that's the, how the transformation comes and this is like providing this kind of nft at the end uh, it could be a nice way for example to connect and also to connect a community of people who have done the same pilgrimage because actually you meet so many people and it creates like a kind of community on the road and afterward a community of people who have done that yeah. so that could be interesting another point is for us that uh, we there's another level that i didn't speak about was uh, the sacraments for example during mass we uh, the priest consecrates creates bread and the bread we believe it becomes the body of Christ so it becomes God that we have to eat and but for someone who did not attend mass I mean it's not easy to see which one is the body of Christ and which one is just bread and consecrated bread because it exactly looks the same so it's specifically uh, 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 put it in a specific place and so on and but that would be I mean if we have for example to provide that to someone who's sick and we need to go to a hospital that would be also a good way to know up to now you just have to trust the person who says oh this is the body of Christ no this is bread no this is the body of Christ and even priests <laughs> can't tell the difference uh, not, <laughs> not, not, not by taste. <laughs> uh, actually, this it was a proof of sanctity for some. I mean, it's it's part of the of the um, the story of some saints that uh, one, for example, he, she received the body of Christ. She said, "No, it's not. It's just bread." It and and the priest says, "Oh yeah, this is a mistake. You're right." But this is very specific. But in such a case, I mean, it could allow uh, to pass some uh, consecrated uh, items, or especially uh, the, the host, the body of Christ, from one temple to another, or to bring that to, to people. And I, I, I do wonder if that, at times, does take away from the aesthetics of faith. So let me give you a story. A popular story in the Buddhist tradition is about this old woman in China who was blind. Mm -hmm. The son was traveling, was a tradesman. So the son said, oh, I'm going to India. Do you want something from India? And the, the mother said, well, you're going to India. Bring me a relic of the Buddha. Okay? She said it as a matter of fact. The son goes out, comes back after a couple of months, and he's at the border of the village. And he said, my old blind mother wanted a, a, a relic of the Buddha, but I completely forgot about it. He's a dead dog. So he breaks off the canine tooth of the dog, washes it, puts it in a nice fabric, brings it to the mother, and says, this is the tooth of the Buddha. All right? The mother was blind. She puts it on the shrine and does her prayers and everything. And within a couple of months, all the miraculous signs started to appear around the house that generally happened with the relics, meaning there were rainbows and, you know, like very beautiful signs and all this thing. And the monks gather and they, they, they realize that, yes, it's not the tooth relic, but the faith is so strong mm -hmm. that it transformed mm -hmm. the nature of the tooth relic to, to uh, you know, what most people can't even do with actual relics. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I do think, you know, there's this sense about, so building a community is a, is a fabulous thing, right? Mm -hmm. And, and the, this idea of like encouraging people to come with it. But 
On the other hand, we also know the human desire to just accumulate and it can just become a token collection phenomenon, right? Like people wanting to have a medallion for everything that they do. Yeah. How, would you, how would you create a, propose a balancing act? Because building a community is a fabulous thing and we would love to, you know, yeah. see something so, that money so, doesn't become so, a factor. So this is kind of a common, so the crypto people talk about it a lot, but money has several different functions. So one is to like store it and invest, right? There's another, which is just transactions. Right. So if I'm just trying to buy something, right? And then another is called um, uh, uh, a unit of account. It's mm -hmm. so that we're all talking about the same thing. So, so if you have money that's high velocity, so it's basically moving around a lot, um, then people don't tr you try to store it. So, mm -hmm. so for example, part of the discussion that we have when we talk about tokenomics, so what you want to do is you want to have a lot of the money being produced, but a lot of the money being consumed. And for the it to not actually appreciate in value. So that the idea, and so you have to try to create incentives so people don't try to hoard it. Right, and, right. And, and the thing that's interesting is that we're like a central bank, we can see the accounts and we can see how money's flowing. And in fact, what's interesting is that video games, big video games actually have gotten pretty good right. at these kinds of game economies. And right. so, so, so I think that's a, it's a good point, but we can, all, we can start to see when people are behaving. And right now, last night's call was because we have an inflation problem mm -hmm. where we're issuing more tokens but we're not allowing people to spend it on anything. So we have to kind of increase more products. Right, right, right. But, it, but yes, it's, it's, a, it's a problem, but I think it's kind of, we need some sort of central banking right. kind of function. May, may, yeah. Maybe we lose the blessing of NFT to be hoarded. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. <laughs> and it just expires. Yeah, okay. yeah. And, and, and inflation is actually a good way to deal with it because right. if you hold it, it just re reduces in value. Right, yeah. Right, right. yeah, I would say, I, we would be very happy, I would say, to use NFTs to uh, provide new experiences and to build the community. And this is really a way to explore. And to be honest, I guess that something the Catholic Church did not do yet, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, the only point is that we consider that you cannot measure generosity. Mm -hmm. So it's not easy to consider that as a kind of uh, uh, um, currency. It means that, I mean, you are not supposed to receive according to your generosity like one dollar for one dollar or one act for one act you're supposed to provide the more you can do but some people i mean they don't have so much so many skills they have don't have so much time so they just do what they can mm -hmm. and and we consider that i mean uh, sample says that uh, each of us is is like a, a glass or a cup of a bowl or a bowl so different size but gold will fill all of them depending on their size. So it's not a problem. I mean, it will be full for everybody. And so the point is, uh, we, I think we would not be comfortable in a, a, a kind of system allowing to know, oh, I did more for the community, so I should receive more. Uh, because yeah, you did more because you had the possibility, but you would receive well, as the others. So, so I, I think what it is for me, my view is it's different types of currency. So, so you have cash, and so cash is helpful to build the church. And then you have work like washing dishes and maybe in your church you don't pay people to wash dishes everyone has to wash dishes so everyone has some time but it but you don't get paid so keeping track of who's done washing dishes is a good thing but maybe some people are disabled and don't have as much time so they can't wash as many dishes so maybe then there's another currency for other kinds of things but but i think for instance if you have a community and everyone's supposed to take care of the chores for example right and it and you can't buy your way in you want to kind of know, is this kid, he stayed up all night washing the dishes. I, I would want to know. So if I got up in the morning mm -hmm. and everyone was on the couch, I would want to know which one of those guys washed the dishes. And, and I think kind of if you have a family, you know, you, you mm -hmm. take care of each other's stuff. But if one person is lazy, it makes the the spiritual emotion kind of weaker. But, in it, but it's different from money, but it's a little bit of like you take care of each other. And I think if you have a large community, and let's say you have 20 people in the house and everyone's doing chores, it's kind of nice to be able to see what people are doing when you're not looking. And I, I realize that this is still maybe too transactional for God. But for a community, it's actually quite useful to not have a non-money way of taking care of the Daiko rake, rake the outside today. And, and, and so, so that's, that's one. But, but I think it's about different types. So maybe there's another thing that people can do, which is art or maybe it's, it's speaking. And so then the question is, do you use this currency for that or is this a separate one? And I think the thing that's interesting about blockchain is that 
um, you could have multiple currencies in the same ecosystem. Yeah, you know? what's interesting, we consider that for God, there are two key values. On one side, it's mercy. And for mercy, you just do what you can mm -hmm. and you, pr you receive so much more. And you, you, you will never be able to reimburse or to just give the equivalent. But the other one is justice. And I, I agree with you. I mean, I live in a community mm -hmm. where are uh, 25 uh, friars. And as you say, some could be like uh, more proactive than others, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> You know, your, 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 your fellow friars will be watching this video. I know, so, I know. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm really proud and I know I love you all. But, <laughs> but what I mean is uh, you're right at some point for the superior of the community, having a, a, a clear picture of what's happening helps also just, I mean, it's also a way, I mean, justice also is a way to encourage uh, the, 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 the weakest to do more, uh, uh, to flourish more and, and also to serve more the community. But the, if they cannot to be merciful mm -hmm. at the same time That's so you're right yeah. probably uh, the right way to use it could help a lot going in that way I, I think one other sort of you know uh, hearing you about uh, blockchain and different kind of currencies I mean one thing is that you know if we were to take an extension of this idea I mean of course you know you can have different religious groups that are doing their own NFTs for their own communities but the fact is that we're also facing a society that is very divided mm -hmm. right and there are very few values that they can converge on. And so the idea, you know, one possible thing could be, could we design an NFT that actually binds these variety of communities together? Mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. see? Meaning, as long as we're talking about various forms of currency, can it build trust between Israel and Palestine? Can mm -hmm. it build certain, can we do something of that nature that, that might be helpful? Even as a reminder in, yeah. in some ways. You know, so. Thoughts? Yeah, uh, I think you had an idea, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will speak Actually, afterward. Yeah, yeah I mean, when we were making this NFT, we were thinking about uh, the community. So the holder, there's a 48 by 6 uh, Buddha, so 6 Goshuin, so it's, uh, there's uh, about the 300 holders. It could be a community, and they can just, uh, next thing is they can visit, but they even uh, under the COVID situation, they couldn't uh, visit a uh, temple uh, easily. And uh, so they can just watch it like remotely. It still uh, works, and they can you can just send the blessings online, <laughs> and they can get some more. Uh, like it's, it's, it needs to be an, uh, a trusted mm -hmm. and uh, um, what do you say? Uh, um, <laughs> sorry, um, yeah, the blessing uh, making making with a blessing and receiving as a um, appreciation and. Uh, um, I forgot the word, sorry. Um, belief, I don't know. Um, the faith? Faith. Faith. Yeah, faith, yes. And then it, oh, it has like connection. So I, I think, I, I believe uh, there will be an um, um, intangible blessing or something like, um, yes, uh, right. the spiritual connection. The, 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 this is an ongoing sort of <laughs> dilemma, actually. And, uh, uh, yeah. uh, sorry, and, uh, and I wanted, uh, uh, we wanted to make community then. Mm -hmm. Finally, they can maybe visit the uh, temple to, to um, copy uh, our su sutra, or they can buy online, and they can still at the home. They can use uh, this uh, blush and um, the charcoal and to do, and they can. I mean, once it's finished, they can send it like paper to the temple, or even like take photo or scan and digital data, send it by email. Still, the priest can play and burn and burn, burn the actual paper or NFT. NFT also could be burned, so yeah, it's, that, and also amulet as well. That, that, that's very interesting. <laughs> I would say that, yeah, such a practice in uh, using NFT for art could blur in a very positive way two lines. The first one is between tangible and intangible uh, art. And, and probably it could also help to develop intangible art or digital art in a way which up to now, I mean, it's not so easy to sell. This is not so easy to expose. And so a large part of artists cannot make a living from that. And so they cannot develop their own art. Uh, so I think we can go uh, really further with that. And the second one is uh, uh, also, um, I would say, uh, yeah, uh, Sorry, I didn't remember <laughs> what I was saying. <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 so yeah, so b between tangible and intangible, yes. And also between a, a work of art and an experience. Mm -hmm. And up to now, when you buy a painting, for example, you buy an artifact and you can have that in your house, but that's all. 
This is not an experience. If you go to the theater or to the opera, you get an experience. And uh, in such a case, you, have, you can have something which is like something in between. And, and for example, we work with our foundation. Uh, we, we started to uh, have a group uh, a workshop on uh, NFT and art. And we work with digital artists providing something like in between. And so two of them, two young guys in France, they provide uh, uh, digital works of art that uh, can be transformed by the way you interact with them as the owner. So the owner is not like uh, someone is just uh, uh, is just not not to own something. So you buy and sell or whatever, but you interact with your work of art. At some point, you discover new things, you transform it, and at some point, it looks like you a little bit. It, it's your own one because it was transformed by the way you use it as an artifact that you touch every day, the way you use it. I mean, it will have the marks which will be different from one to another and it will be the only one of you. And I don't know if it's the... I don't so, so for NFTs, it's interesting because you can see who's owned it in the past. It's kind of like if you have a work of art that you know, the, you know, Napoleon once owned, right? right? right. And so, so similarly, by holding it, you're adding your value to the back of the, the art. The provenance right? is much yeah. more clear. E yeah. e exactly. Yeah. And so it's possible for the most famous paintings, for example, because you have a kind of trustability because they are so expensive. Mm -hmm. But you were speaking about a dollar is a dollar, but a narco dollar is not a dollar. <laughs> I mean, this is, uh, I mean, a dollar coming from uh, drag uh, and so on. It, it, I mean, it, it owns, uh, uh, the value, uh, the facial value is one dollar, but nobody wants to have that uh, because, uh, I mean, it's, it's like dirty. But the church, I heard, but the church can clean money, right? If you, no, if, 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 no. I, think, I think if I don't, no, no, we have no tradition. Do you want to name the towns and the things? We, we have no tradition of money laundry. Let's be honest. It's not a tradition, let's say, but, 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 no. the, but for instance, government can. Because yeah. Bob government can tax yep, yep. Al Capone's money right, right. and pay it out in welfare and it's clean again. Yeah. And I think in general, yeah. churches can take money and spend it and it's cleaner than if a normal person does, yeah. right? Yeah, but we would not receive money from, from uh, I don't know, coming okay. from uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, Al okay. Capone or whatever. Can you receive but, crypto? Can you receive crypto in a church? The church can uh, up to now, I think it's not designed for that, but uh, theoretically we could. Yeah. yeah, and there's a better traceability at some point. So, yeah, because I think most of the U.S. major funds and banks now accept crypto and have crypto allocations. So I, I, I would assume that the Vatican Church follows best practices around that kind of thing. So right? We were thinking to get a crypto payment on for the temples. And it could be a new business model for. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but, yeah. but what, what, what I like yeah. specifically yeah. in your new way to, to, to deal with art is this kind of interacting with the people, and so they can not only buy things, but they can experience, they can share, they can establish a connection with the priest that can do something for them even remotely. And, and, and really, this is interesting. And I think this is something that uh, in Rome, we just start to explore, but a lot of work, uh, of work has to be done. And I think that would be really fruitful if some people from here who are perhaps more advanced can come to Rome and share their experience and best practices just to provide more ideas. Because there was only one uh, announcement. It was like a, a press release about um, NFT uh, with the, the, the museum, uh, Vatican Museum. But actually, the project is now just in the limbo. It's very in the very beginning. And I think all of that has to be specified. I actually have a planning to, to make like smart contract to make like Mandala World. I, uh, wow. I wanted to learn more about Mandala, that's why. But uh, this is just a study case with Mandala, with uh, AI. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, image based uh, AI, not a uh, text based. Mm -hmm. But I was uh, using a lot of different uh, type of uh, the imp impression, expression right, right. of a mandala. And let's say it's a flower, a Buddha, okay. <laughs> the, yes. But yeah. uh, next step, I want to make a mandala collection. And the mandala has like a nine octo, the taizoka, right, 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 right. it has a structure. Right. So if, you, if, if, it, if someone like or the collection, like nine mandala, then it will open up the next level, next <laughs> dimension. Right. And it, it could be much more big mandala and right. it could be a, like kind of universe, kind of <laughs> Mandela right. universe. That's why I want, I imagine I'm... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm what, what, one of the ideas is around like, you know, can religious art as NFTs mm -hmm. can be as inspiring? Like, you know, 
you guys went to the main hall early on. Now you look at this dragon on the ceiling, mm-hmm. right? And the dragon chases you around as you're as you're walking around, kind mm-hmm. of thing. You know, it's 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 sort of it it gives you this feeling of grandeur and it gives you this feeling of connection and so on. Um, or do you think we can a- be able to replicate or add on certain mm-hmm. elements of that 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 sort of enhances our experience mm-hmm. with with religious so, art and NFT? So, so I think that any new technology creates a new medium and it takes a while for the medium to become native. So Mm -hmm. for instance, when television started, you just had a radio announcer sitting there just with a picture. And it took many, many years, decades for us to see MTV and television. And when we had the first motion picture, Lumiere just shot the play stage without moving the camera. Mm -hmm. And it was just the play. And and for movies to become modern, it took Mm -hmm. a long time. And I think that NFTs and blockchain, an, an NFT is just a picture stapled to a smart contract. It's a very stupid use of NFT because NFT can actually be a program. It can be a game. It can be dynamic experience. And so I think that what we need is we need real religious scholars, Mm -hmm. real artists, and real technologists to design what a native blockchain NFT religious experience is. Because I think, you know, when we invented any new invention, eventually it becomes kind of native. Like even paper, you, you know, you, it, as paper and printing press has evolved, the Bible has now taken a very different form than the original illuminated manuscripts and stuff like that. So, so I think what we need, though, is for the churches and the temples and the shrines to get involved and experiment, because I think it'll be a very different kind of experience than what we see now. Yeah, that's really interesting because what uh, 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 printing uh, provided was a uh, uh, physical copy in each house of the Bible. Of yeah, yeah, pre- yeah, 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 previously, right. Right. Uh, the only way to get an access to the scripture was to go uh, to uh, the mass mm-hmm. and, re- and just listen. Mm-hmm. But then people were able to pray and to meditate and even to study at home. And it completely changed the interaction with the text. And I think that the next interaction that could be provided by NFTs could be also like co-creation with the people. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, For example, uh, we have this uh, um, uh, example of uh, 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 once a year, everybody can add some little parts to a big fresco, uh, I think using blockchain, I don't remember the name, Uh, but and so each each country fights to put uh, its flag or to, for example, we had a face of Thomas Thomas Pesquier, our French astronaut uh, this year, and so all the French team tried to uh, 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 move the others around. Gi- Gimify gi- the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. so, <laughs> but, but it could be done in another way, like yeah. more constructive, and it would be something like uh, uh, building together a work of art and praying together, just, just to let you know, uh, icons are very specific in our tradition because uh, the, the, the guy who uh, paints an icon, each time he, he, he puts a little drop of color, supposed to say a specific prayer. And a very short prayer. And so it's praying and making art at the same time. Mm-hmm. And so that could be something the same way. So like people praying the rosary. So for example, I have the rosary beans to my, uh, 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 on my, on my uh, Dominican habit. And so we pray and we're connected through this prayer because we do that all around the world. And that could be the same, but it could be visible. And so everybody could add his little drop or her little drop of color to something that would make a beautiful fresco. And th- it will be like praying, uh, putting the commu- uh, gathering a community, uh, doing something together, and making art. But for sure, for that, it cannot be just spontaneous. We need an artist to guide us. Mm-hmm. But then the others can be co-creators, and that would be absolutely wonderful. Yeah, I think, yeah, but, but, but that will remain one of the challenges, I think. Because mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, the guidelines for religious art are quite specific mm-hmm. uh, in, in, in many of the traditions. And it, it, it becomes an issue of how far you can go from the specificity of things. My temple don't sell the amulet, but if you go to the temple, I mean, I, he- I heard that there are only two or three companies who make amulets. Yeah, we import it. Right? Yeah. So then you order it, yeah. and it comes in the box. Right. Yeah. Right. Then yeah. you look at the amulet, and then it's just a piece of fabric in the, you know, something in the bag, right? Some prayers on it. And then yeah. you actually yeah. bless it in the prayer hall, yeah. then become meaning, have a start having meaning, right? right? So I think that it's possible to bless NFT in some way, but the, up to the who's actually receiving that NFT, you know? But Japan, for instance, I think that there's strong, like, let's say, 
for instance, if somebody die in the futon, mm -hmm. then you actually clean it intensively. Do you want to still sleep on it? And then if like that, you know, for instance, asking that on Japanese people, people say no. But for instance, probably other country, well, let's say in America, probably people say, hey, maybe it's okay. Because if it's intensely cleaned, you know, uh, so there's the idea of this something that it's not really you can materialize, uh -huh. but something people actually have some connection to okay. it. Yeah, I don't know call merit or I don't know whatever we call, but um, yeah, it's like a, for instance, can you eat? food from toilet bowl if it's intensely intensely clean you know something like that so I think the metaphor I give is if you had two cats uh -huh. that were twins uh -huh. and one was yours and one wasn't but you couldn't tell the difference which one do you want okay. you still want the one that was yours, yours right? right so so I think there are a lot of intangible things right. whether it's spiritual mm -hmm. or it's just personal right, right? Um, yeah. and and again I think that your blessing if you have two omamori mm -hmm. amulets one's blessed and one's not and if I prove to you you can't tell the difference you still want the one that's blessed that's right? Right. Right. So, right so I think right. there's definitely a fact. Uh -huh, so, uh -huh. so the thing is, even though it's intangible, there's a fact, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? One, and one is first, one is second. You right, know, so, right. so I think that's the key thing. Is I think NFTs are digital, so they're not material, but they are facts. Yeah. Mm. This, this one is an authentic NFT. This one isn't. But, but we yeah. deal in a world where facts matter, right? right? So, so I think that that's another that way. Of certain, in certain parts of the world, facts <laughs> matter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But in a way, NFT can prove who did the blessing. Maybe yeah. we can just put the metadata the, the on it. Yeah, yes, metadata yes, around yes, that. Yes, mm. to make it clear. How long should blessings last, Daigo-san? If, if, you, if, you, if you were to bless NFT, will you put an expiration date on it? Uh, in Kyoto, we have a very famous shrine, uh, which is called uh, Atago-san, Atagoyama. And uh, so it is a god of fire. And uh, so uh, we had a custom to get the uh, omamori mm -hmm. of uh, the preventing fire uh, from that shrine uh, in the top of the mountains. So it takes uh, two hours to get there. And uh, I think as uh, many of the followers, uh, how can I say, have the value in the efforts. So some years ago, so they started to sell the omomori uh, at the bottom of the, <laughs> the mountain but uh, so some people say it's not so valuable so right. they don't uh, buy the omomori so i think so it depends on the case so some people uh, have the value in the efforts so in that case uh, so if we can easily get something mm. right uh, it, it is not so valuable but uh, some people who are disabled or right. sort of physically uh, have the uh, disabilities, so uh, it, it can be a good um, way to. But so, so would you be okay, for example, if there was a way that instead of the two hour hike to the temple, mm -hmm. somebody did two hours of community service mm -hmm. somewhere else, mm -hmm. right? And, and was able to prove that mm -hmm. and be able to get some kind of NFT, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, omamori of service or some kind of protection kind of thing. Um, I mean, you know. I think it, that will make the world much more closer, right, than in, in, in other yeah, ways. I, and I guess that's the point is there yeah. are these conflicting tensions, right? Yeah. Like like inclusion is sounds really important, right, right, but right. then traditions, traditions also important. important. And yep. I think there's a balance, you know, and I think yeah. that, and I think that's kind of where, where to, uh, to the extent that religion can be creative, I think yeah. that's where the, the senior people in these communities have to be creative, right? You have mm -hmm. to kind of figure out what the trade-off is right by how much tradition do we get up, give up to include this community. Right. You know, and I think that each church and temple should have its own design uh -huh. because I think it depends on where you are. If you, I think you're in a place where there's a particularly downtrodden group of people that you're trying to include, right. making their efforts interoperable with this other more traditional one probably makes sense. Right, right, right. But, if, you know, so, so I, but I think that's kind of where the art right, uh, comes, right, right, right? Right, right, right? I think what he said, about you know like climbing a mountain to get the amulet for the you know it takes like three hours, mm -hmm. hours? Two, two, two three hours right two, 
can remind me the story about the cake mix in America. Uh, you know, first they start selling the cake mix, just add the water and bake it. They didn't sell at all. Right. But later they changed it, you know, add the egg in it. <laughs> then they start selling like crazy. So it's, there's some like effort we have to put on. Uh -huh. So we feel like, uh, oh, we did some effort and we reserve, deserve something rather than just, you know, oh, we just go, you know, we just go to the online, get it kind of way. So, yeah. Yeah, if I may, I think that that's really something about the effort and that's also something about the physical effort. And I would like to focus also on the role of the body because uh, digitalization probably helps us to do much more, but we still have to be connected for us. We have like two different traditions uh, in Christianity. I would say that a blessing can be given to almost anything which is supposed to be good because uh, benediction means benedicere in, in latin means saying something good about so it has to be good but otherwise it could be an action it can be a place it can be a person and uh, but uh, we have sacraments and the sacraments imply something tangible like water for baptism or bread for uh, eucharist and it it's a way to remind that we have a body and uh, for example, like climbing the mountain is just like, like any kind of efforts. It's a physical effort, it's kind of connection with nature. You go somewhere and going somewhere, you also go somewhere spiritually. And that makes a difference. And so uh, probably the NFT can validate that, and, uh, but it could not probably replace the physical experience of moving somewhere. And we had the privilege to visit this beautiful garden and just moving in the garden is an experience. Yeah. And if I, could, if I could do that even in 3D, it not, would not be the same because I have all my senses aware, even the smells, even the noises and so on. And also the, the physical uh, feeling that my body is currently moving and I go somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That makes a difference. You yeah, know, it's the same thing with like, you know, the mandala paintings, like, yeah. you know, to create a mandala takes about 50 hours, 60 yeah. hours of work. Yeah. You're laying each grain of yeah. sand yes. with yes. prayers. Yes. You have to watch your bodily functions because you can't sneeze or breathe heavy blowing off the sand. Yeah. And then you have it at the end. You admire it and then you blow it all away, right? But then you just capture it as a video and if you're, or, or as a photograph and you just send it. It somehow sort of takes away some intensity mm -hmm. from it. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how do you, how do you transmit this kind of visceral aspect of the experience or do we just recognize no those are the limits mm -hmm. of nft at this stage in time but and, but, and but i but I, th I think that um there's so there's definitely physical things but for people who play a lot of video games mm -hmm. they start to get very emotional about things that are happening in the digital in a way that other people can't and mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I know people who get super aroused when bandwidth increases, like network engineers, you know, so, so they have a physical sensation from um, just bits, right? And, 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 and I, think, I think that that's not unusual. Like, if you read a book, sometimes you can start to imagine that it's real. Yeah. And also, just the interfaces are getting better. So virtual reality is now getting to where, you know, you have vibration. So, like, I, I have this a Tai Chi VR one that, that I tried the other day and it's great because you, you move and it, it vibrates and you start to feel and the sounds make right. us feel like you're in the forest and, yeah. and, it, and it really is not the same as physical but it's getting to where your brain starts to perceive um, that it's got a lot of physical motion so so I think that and then and then there are some people I think that 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 can kind of project their mind into sort of acrobatics inside of a game. And so it becomes like a mirror neurons. It's very physical. So I don't think it's completely one or the other. I, I do agree that it's different, but there's much more kind of a physical sensation people feel from digital than is, than is obvious. You know? Yeah, I agree fully. But I think we have to enrich the experience instead of replacing the experience, ex except for people who cannot do something. Like disabled people, or during a lockdown, you cannot do something that you can replace. But yeah, the, the point would be, for example, uh, in, in Macao, uh, uh, our um, order uh, runs a school, a paperless school, so everything is digital. Mm -hmm. But to balance that, the, the, you know, the kids have a lot of sport. Mm -hmm. They have, uh, they, they know how to, they learn how to uh, draw the Chinese ca uh, calligraphy and so on. Uh, they have a lot of appliance science and they have a lot of art. Mm -hmm. Just a way to, so they also can, uh, uh, yeah, do things with their body and they do things 
purely with a brain and purely digital. And this kind of balance is pretty important for the development of the kid. Mm -hmm. And so I would say this is the same. I, I'm sure that this line is also more or less more, more and more blurred because of what you say, all the, those haptic things mm -hmm. that allow us to, to feel things mm -hmm. emotionally. But yeah, we, we, we need to continue to mix and to enrich the yeah. cocktail. I totally agree with Eric. I mean, about, you know, like a rubber hand experience, you know, you need to have a, you know, actual experience first to mm -hmm. have an effect, right? Mm -hmm. And then also that experience shows that somebody don't actually have an effect on them. Mm -hmm. And then for instance, they also have a new uh, program about soji, mm -hmm. right? I think, that, you know, cleaning the floor with taizoin in a traditional way, then people actually have a first hand experience, mm -hmm. then can move into the digital world too. Mm -hmm. So. Without yeah. that one, probably we can replace the experience. Right. Yeah. Actually, I had a question. Uh, is the ceremony or uh, we were thinking? Actually, we were thinking like virtual sampai as a visiting like mm -hmm. virtually metaverse. Mm -hmm. And it does, does it <laughs> is it does it work? And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. The physical uh, the visiting the, the mountain mm -hmm. like three hours walk is like like that's that's perfect. That's that's better, I think. But uh, if if we make like virtually three hours walk in a budget, mm -hmm. it it's not the same. So it's, it's just, but um, could be a different um, different ex ex experience as a the, virtual. Yeah, especially as a pilgrimage. And yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It could be and different. I, I would not try to replace, but I mean the interest of uh, metaverse, for example, it allows you to have any kind of universe. So instead of climbing virtually a mountain, I would prefer to be on Mars or under yeah, the yeah. ocean or in any kind of places I could not go or even like in, in the movie Avatar, like yeah. meet yeah. creatures that do not exist on Earth. Mm -hmm. And that would be like next level of experience. So, so I, think, I think that's a two separate things. So I think that's very exciting. <laughs> but I also think that, that there's like, like, like being able to virtually go into the the labyrinth or or into the you know the, the 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 basement of the vatican you know you won't let normal people go but maybe and, and maybe you can even get a scratch and sniff version of the vatican you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a little bit more real you know? <laughs> incense designed by incense, yeah, Shoei, Shoei the version. but but, yeah. but but i but i think no, but, but when you think about the inclusion right yeah. i think it's important that you want diversity because yeah. I think the core thing for able-bodied people yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. But some people can't do it. Maybe they're older. You know, maybe they're they can't or, they can't afford it. Or, you know? or the mindset is different. Like yeah. they get psyched by something else. I, I still remember these my undergrad students, uh, uh, you know, at MIT. And one day I realized that a lot of them hadn't even crossed the bridge across the Charles River. Mm -hmm. So I said one Sunday morning I was like, let's do that. And as a as an end thing, we'll have you know some some cappuccino together and what we do that we're gathering the students and i see i see this one kid still in front of the computer and i'm like hey are you not coming and he turns around and he goes venerable tenzin i don't understand all this excitement of outdoors movement it took us ten thousand years of civilization to get indoors <laughs> what's the rush <laughs> and you realize that it's something else that psyched him uh, you know that psychs him than, than anything else <laughs> yeah but I, I like your idea of uh, like let's say providing an experience to people who cannot access especially access to some places and and also that could be a way also to have a kind of interreligious uh, uh, interaction mm -hmm. because for example there are some uh, uh, temples uh, which are forbidden for people who are not from this religion mm -hmm. and that I can fully understand it's just a question it's a sacred place yeah. but also that could be a way to share that and to share some Something about the emotion and to share something about the meaning and the knowledge and probably you understand much better people if you have a little bit uh, uh, the, the experience of what it is to do the Hajj for the Muslims mm -hmm. than to see those million of people going in a place remote place sounds crazy mm -hmm. but probably it's not and probably it's super meaningful so you that train be, people because yeah. one of the things that happens in virtual is like flight simulators right. you don't let people fly an airplane from the beginning so maybe there's like a Hajj simulator or a Vatican meet the Pope simulator that you do over and over again. <laughs> <We can laughs> or, 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 or just <laughs> waiting, waiting in line at St. Peter's. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like med meditation uh, simulator. Yeah. 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 I think meditation simulator would be pretty much like meditation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's the original simulator. <laughs> it's, the, it's the mother of all simulators. <laughs> what other... Like we were talking about, you know, this aspect of intangible in terms of the values of NFT to sort of either promote trust or to promote community and so on. Uh, 
any other thing that you guys can think about uh, that talks about this intangible aspect of? I have a one, but it's kind of controversial. Probably the administration doesn't like it. Uh -huh. But one is, you know, how you, we can actually more, um, let's say, quantify their process of certifying the priest. Like, for instance, in you know, how people, like, you know, Eric mentioned about how people spend time in the monastery. Yeah. Right now, for instance, most of, like, you know, Rinzai school, kind of more major people, how many years people spend time in the uh, monastery, right? So, but, you know, three years, you can just, you know, fool around. Right. <laughs> or you actually intensively doing some work, some, like, you know, doing, the, you know, maintenance of the temple, field work. And some of them are harder than the other, you know. So, if we can put, you know, make that one like NFT, uh, then how much actually, like, or in other, like, a temple members, like a temple situation, for example, uh, each generation, like, you know, normally people actually associate to one temple, they have to kind of be with temple for many generations, right? But financial situation always changed by generation as well. Right. So then some of them actually cannot pay the, you know, enough donations for the ceremony. But if they can come to the temple, do the, you know, hey, help the weeding the garden or something, mm -hmm. that, you know, add more merit. Then, you know, rather than just, you know, oh, big donor can put the name on this, you know, like a prayer hall or something right. like that. Can I think merit is an interesting thing mm -hmm. because the feel yeah. of merit is like it's our it's, bank. Yeah, it's, and you know? it's like proof so of work. Right? It's approval. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and, and I think it would be interesting to kind of go through and categorize different types of value and then how they're generated because some of them are, are work some right. of them are you know, other things right, right. and because right. it's similar to academia you know in academia sometimes you have to take get a certain number of credits mm -hmm. uh, you have to pay a certain amount of tuition mm -hmm. but the PhD you you have to also hit a high water mark in terms of just um, objective value of the argument you know and and I think maybe there's a similar thing for for priests and so there's probably a certain amount of thing that you have to put a certain amount of work in but maybe there's another piece that's which is judged by a, a committee and I mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's, I think it's natural because academia kind of comes from a similar system from, from the church system right, right. well it did it yeah, yeah. It, did. So yeah. It, did come, it did come from the church system uh, but any other, like, uh, what, what else could sort of this intersection of NFT, religion, and so on do in terms of the social good? So um, I believe the, the for all religions, the goal is to lessen the anxieties. Anxieties, okay. So how the NFT can contribute to lessening the anxi anxieties okay. for the mm. people? Mm. Mm. I mean, that could be also in a, like, you know, one of the major causes for anxiety today is the lack of sense of belonging, mm -hmm. you know, that, that people have this sense of loneliness and all this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, can it be a thing where you, you, you have a sense of belonging? But, well, that's why, so often, yeah. you know, people talk about owning as the thing about mm -hmm. blockchain, for, but for me, I use the word join. So mm -hmm. it's like where one, two, three is read, write, join. Mm -hmm. Because I think the main reason for having an NFT is that you're part of something. Mm -hmm. So like token is you get to participate in the community. So I think the idea is that you have this NFT, you know you're part of the community, and if it has utility, maybe you can then use that to get into, so we use the term token gating, mm -hmm. but it's gates that you can get through because you have an NFT or you have a token. And so, you know, and, and I think it's interesting, the original calling card, the business cards, when people gave them, it meant that you can use this to get through my gate. Yeah. So if like, you know, uh, Thomas Jefferson gave you a card, it meant yeah. that the guards at his gate would let you in. Yeah. And usually you, you only use it once. But, right, 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 right. But, but, but I think the idea that you get these tokens that you know that when you're in trouble, you can use this to go uh, to the monastery and, and get in the gate. So, so I think the sense of belonging is a really important part of, of right. the system. Yeah. That could be an interesting thing to create NFTs for coming into the temples or monasteries mm -hmm. for whatever period of time. Some of the member of the temple hesitate to come to the temple because they don't have enough money to mm -hmm. do the ceremony or something like mm -hmm. that. But instead they can come to the temple because they, okay, they help in the garden or whatever, so they can come because they have a token. So right, then, right. you know, we have a close connection with the members as well. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Or maybe they could be a disabled person who cannot move, but oh, they yeah, they'll be a part of our right, right. Yeah, community and yeah. anxiety. Mm -hmm. uh, for the rehabilitation for the disabled people, for, for the virtual 
uh, uh, tour of the temple. So we're attaching the sensor on the legs. Uh -huh. And uh, if they do not move their legs, they cannot uh, see the uh, beautiful gardens mm -hmm. or uh, the talks from the priest. So, and uh, so it is a kind of the, how can I say, of course a rehabilitation, but uh, um, they can have the goal to visit the real temple in mm -hmm. the in the future. Yeah. So I think this is the kind of the lesson, the the anxieties and the, the mm -hmm. mixture of the yeah. technologies and the. Real it, it's like Fitbit meets Taizo <laughs> and yeah, 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 meets yeah. Zen walks. <laughs> <Right>? yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, I think metaverse is good for that. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. but uh, still have experience. Yeah. Um, yes. I was thinking to dedicate my art, like uh, dedicate art to the temple or a shrine and Hono, Hono, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hono as an NFT or digital art, is it possible? Oh, no. I was thinking what is, it could be like a digital monitor, but it's not like it doesn't last long, like a hundred years, but there may be data. How can I, how can I dedicate my art to <laughs> like religion, or like temple? <laughs> well, sure. if you have sure. the sure. blockchain and the contract address, yeah. You could print it out or etch it in yes. stone and give it because that shouldn't change. I, I right? think actually yeah. NFT can work, but yeah. the, the device is uh, always uh, the, expert, the external <laughs> representation. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I, I think I think I think yeah, if the temple should get a wallet. Oh yes. And then you just you can just <laughs> yeah. send it, you know. And then maybe I each mean. each religion has a different you blockchain. Know, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, yeah, you know the, the, the entire point of monastic life was to leave your wallets well, behind. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Wallet. yeah, actually, if you just yeah. offer a, a QR code which is engraved in, in stone, oh. through that, you can even change each month, offer like a new experience, and people just flash it with their phone, mm -hmm. uh, pilgrims when they come, and they get something get, that can be just an image or a mandala, but that can be something with a soundtrack that can yeah. be enriching the experience and if it's designed in connection with uh, the monks living here it can be spiritually very meaningful so that that could be also a way uh, to provide something at the right place in the in the in the sanctuary i mean it cannot be anywhere and it cannot interfere with the sacred part but that could be very rich my, my, my feeling is that unfortunately too often at least in accident the way we do things is we just turn to digital things which already exist mm -hmm. But uh, what I see is currently uh, technology is really challenging art, especially with DALI 2, for example, that makes yeah. like a, a full pictures more uh, better or faster than a graphic designer. And I think it will be like the, the arriving of photography or cinema. Photography has completely transformed painting mm -hmm. because uh, you did not uh, need a painter to make a portrait, just a photographer was enough. And so painting has to reinvent itself and go to abstraction and so on. And so they discovered things that they would never have explored if they would not have been pushed out of the comfort zone by photography. And to my mind, those technologies are pushing artists out of their comfort zone and they have to let this movement happen and really try to invent new, new kinds of arts probably. And this is n not like uh, copying and pasting, but really creating new things. And that's where I think spirituality can be really part of this new creation. Right. It could be an AI art. AI art, I mean, uh, they're showing some art in space. Actually, my friend Saori Kanda was showing her AI, AI art in Toji. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, between the two mandalas, she draw a lot of art, lotus and a lot of uh, kind of beautiful. Um, art and it was showing just uh, in a space, not physical, but they can just uh, exper have experience. Um, yeah, an just with, with Joseph, uh, uh, thanks to you we, uh, uh, and, and to them, we had the experience to go to the, this uh, exhibition in, 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 in Tokyo. Oh, uh, yeah, Team that, Lab. Yeah, yeah, Team Lab, and actually it was great. In one of those rooms, it was like a, a dark space, and uh, if you didn't move, some uh, butterflies were appearing on you. But it means that just keeping silent makes something, keeping quiet, quietness creates something. And if you try to touch them, it was a way to kill them. So actually just action kills, but uh, a silent and, and a quietness creates. And it was like an interesting approach mm -hmm. of interactive art. And yeah, it provides like a counterintuitive experience, which to my mind was really valuable. Yes. <laughs> Well, really thank you all. I think, I think that's the time. Well, uh, it was good first conversation on, on this thing and we'll 
bring it to a close. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for asking us. Yeah. Thank you.